Hey friends, it is the night seasons when the Lord speaks to me so many times if I'll turn my heart to him. It is Saturday, November 20th, 2021. And I want to release to you some revelation regarding the Antichrist spirit. And it shall be different than most people have an understanding of. The Lord began releasing some of this to me a couple weeks ago as I was driving to Kansas to a biological dentist. See, the Antichrist spirit is the spirit that governs the self-life. That is the Antichrist spirit. So unless you say, oh, he's over there, he's there, and your focus is all in the personification of that person, the Antichrist spirit is the spirit that governs the self-life. Just as the spirit of Christ is the spirit that governs the selfless life, the laid down life. So lest you say over there or in him or, or, but you need to recognize this is all our battle, the inward battle of the inward kingdom in battling the anti-Christ spirit in each one of us. This is the spirit. This is what Jesus says. He who overcomes, overcomes this spirit, this anti-Christ spirit spirit this spirit of the world this spirit of the devil of lucifer is the antichrist spirit and of course lucifer when he fell in the heavens in ezekiel chapter 28 it speaks of this that he was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him this iniquity is the antichrist spirit iniquity in the hebrew literally means to be crooked to be bent to be twisted and it, it is in here in our subjection our unflu influence in the antichrist spirit that our dna became twisted it became twisted through the lie because lie is a twisting of the truth. And see, this is the power or the authority of Antichrist spirit. In Ephesians chapter 2, where, where it says, And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power that word power in the Greek is exousia. It should be translated authority. The prince of the authority of the air. The spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation. This authority of the air is he who rules the air of this world at this time. And that is the devil, the antichrist spirit the authority that he has in the air is because of the lie the lie that he is constantly putting forth in the minds of men the twisting of truth that there therein is his authority in the lie christ's authority is in his word the truth The truth of this is who you really are and of course Christ was the truth he was the personification of truth and that is love the laid down life whereas the lie is self the preservation of self so this is our battle with 
the Antichrist spirit, lest you look for it out there or you look for the personification of that but and miss the inward battle that we must all deal with. Honestly, I do not look for that person out there, that Antichrist spirit. I do not look for that spirit in others, but I am well aware of the battle within. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. That's the inward kingdom. And so this Antichrist spirit, as I say, this is what the Lord spoke to me as I was driving to Kansas, governs the self-life. And so any measure of self that is in you that has not yet been dealt with is because of the presence of Antichrist spirit through his lies that you believe. And how do we overcome the devil? Revelation chapter 12, this Antichrist spirit. What does it say in Revelation chapter 12? Is it verse 10 or 11? I forget. They overcame him, the devil, Antichrist spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. That's the power of Christ. And the word of of their testimony that's the authority of the spirit of christ and they love not their lives unto the death that is the overcoming of the self-life not loving your lives unto laying down the self-life yes sometimes it's physically as well but it's also speaking of spiritually So is in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 that is speaking of this prince of the power, the authority, the heir, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience, among whose, whom also we also had our conversation or our conduct in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, the desires of the flesh, fulfilling, fulfilling the will of the flesh and of the mind. If we are fulfilling the will of our flesh and our mind, we are under the authority and power of Antichrist spirit. If you cannot control what you eat, physically eat, you are under the prince of the power of the air. That's, that's an area that you still need to deal with. And this is what Isaiah chapter 58 speaks of. This is the power of the fast. As it says that you would humble your soul to bring the soul, the desire, these desires un, in subjection to the Spirit of Christ. And we learn how to do that through fasting by subjecting those desires to the Spirit of Christ where it no longer has power over you, food. I've pretty much conquered that area of his authority. I just have, you know, people that have fasted a lot. I don't, I don't need to eat. I don't have a desire to eat. Yes, I eat for my health, but I could, I could live without eating. It's not a desire of mine. I don't have a problem not eating anything of this world. You can put anything before me and I don't have to have it. I don't have a desire. Oh, I got to have that sugar. I got to have this. I got to have that. I, I just don't have it. I've conquered that through fasting. And, and obviously there's antichrist spirit can have greater influence in our life in certain areas and different people. But there is the power of fasting. Not just fasting TV. I'm talking about truly fasting food. Not just a Daniel fast, 
but not eating, period, just having water. And so if you're struggling in that area, that struggle is with the Antichrist spirit to fulfill the desires of the flesh. That's, that's the temptation. And that was when Antichrist or the devil came to Jesus in the wilderness when, he, when Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. For what purpose? So that Christ could overcome him. How did he overcome through the laying down of his life by the submission of his will to the Father to hear what the Father would say and through the power or through the authority of the truth. So when the enemy put that temptation of food before Christ and said, turn this stone into bread, Jesus said, no, he laid down his life and said, no, it's, it's not about my will. Father, what is your will? And he heard the word, it is written. This was in his heart. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, the truth. So he, here, here he overcame that lust of the flesh for physical food as he had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and was hungered. Meaning his body was saying, feed me now. But yet he did not circumvent his submission to the Father and say, I am a son, yes, I can turn that stone into bread. No, that's rebellion. Be careful lest you fall into that vein of sonship and go, yes, as sons we can do this, we can do that. No, it's always in subjection to the Father. It's always in that spirit of surrender and oneness with the Godhead, not functioning independently and say, oh, I have power because I'm a son. No. It's inclining our ear and hearing what the Spirit of Christ would say. And so Jesus wasn't always tempted like as we are. How is that? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the areas that Antichrist spirit comes at us in. And those are the three areas that Adam and Eve were tempted in. The visual, seeing it, that it's good for food, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that it will give you wisdom, right? That was the enemy says, the Lord knows that if you eat of this, you'll be wise and your eyes will be opened. So Jesus was not always tempted like as we are in those three areas, that Antichrist spirit. And he who overcomes all three areas will I grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and was granted to sit with my father on his throne. When did Christ overcome? When he was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil in the wilderness, where he was tempted in all points like as we are, and he overcame. And from there began his ministry from the throne. And here is our invitation to the high calling. What is the high calling? that Paul speaks of in Ephesians. It's the calling to the throne. To rule and reign with Christ. But to rule and reign with Christ, we must have overcome the Antichrist spirit. The spirit of this world, 
the spirit that influences this world. And so really this is what I'm wanting you to see is not this outward battle, but the inward one. It is Antichrist spirit, which governs the self-life. The spirit of Christ governs the selfless life. And to the measure that we have a self-life, it is still influence of Antichrist in us. And this Antichrist in us is the mystery of iniquity that a Second Thessalonians chapter 2 speaks of. The mystery of iniquity that is already at work. And those who now letteth it work, it says in, in, in the King James. Meaning, you're, you allow your life to be ruled by desires. You're letting it work in you. And so if we continue to let it to work, it becomes a greater and greater power and strength in our life, Antichrist spirit, rather than the spirit of Christ. And this is what 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is speaking of, this mystery of iniquity, which is juxtaposed to the mystery of Christ. What is the mystery of Christ? Christ in you, Christ being formed in you, to where you come into maturity, where Christ is arising upon your heart, and to you're stepping into the fullness of that identity, this surrendered life. And these are the mature sons, those who have overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life of the Antichrist spirit. Because they've allowed the spirit of Christ to arise upon their heart. They, they capture every thought because the prince of the power, the authority of the air is constantly flooding the airways with lies, with lies. And as 2 Thessalonians says, we're to cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, the Spirit of Christ. And having in a readiness to punish all disobedience. When does that happen? When you are exalted to the throne. <laughs> Because now you've overcome and now you sit in that place of authority and power to punish that which once had dominion in your life. You cannot bring deliverance to others from that spirit until you've overcome it. And so this is our battle with Antichrist spirit. So do not so much look to that personification which shall come in the earth because just as Jesus was the personification of the Christ spirit so and he was who the son of God well the personification of Antichrist spirit shall come in a person the Antichrist and he is the son of perdition we have son of God, son of perdition. Son of perdition is he who fully, the Antichrist spirit has fully arisen upon the self-life, totally given to the self-life. And is inhabited by that spirit, just as Christ was inhabited by the Father through the spirit of Christ. And this spirit of Antichrist is arising upon a people in the church. This is what 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is speaking of. This is Paul writing. That the son of perdition, that he as God sitteth in the temple, the naos, the inner sanctuary. He's speaking of the heart of people. Sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist spirit is saying, see, I rule. I rule the hearts of men. And that is his desire, to rule the hearts of men. Just as Christ's desire, his 
that we would willingly surrender our heart to his spirit, this spirit that lays down its life, this spirit of love, not self-love. That all things can be brought together in one, just as Antichrist spirit is trying to bring all things together in one, in this one new order, one new world order is that working of antichrist spirit to bring all under the self-life and how is he going to do it just as christ did it as the son of god and laying down his life the enemy and daniel chapter 9 is going to counterfeit that which christ did that christ was cut off in the middle of the week to pay the price for our sins the middle of the week is speaking of a week of years. So in, at three and a half years after Jesus Christ's ministry of three and a half years from the time that he was tempted in the wilderness, he overcame and was granted to sit on the throne and to rule from that place in heaven while he was on the earth. After three and a half years of that ministry, he was cut off out of the land of the living, it says in Isaiah chapter 53. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. In the middle of the week was he cut off. That is the let's see, that's where Christ offered his life upon the cross. In the spirit of Christ of surrendering the life. So that we could come into that revelation in life. So that he could pour out the spirit of Christ upon all men. And that's what he did as he ascended to the Father in resurrection life. And he ascended and was seated at the right hand of the Father. What's the Father's right hand? In the, the Father's right hand is his hand of truth. And from there, Jesus poured out the spirit of truth into the world. The spirit of Christ. But Antichrist is going to counterfeit. The devil is going to counterfeit this in Daniel chapter 9. That this is what's the abomination of desolation. What's the desolation? The desolation of men's hearts. As they've allowed this Antichrist spirit to arise upon their hearts. And here he's taking dominion in the hearts of men. But he is also coming in the personification of that person, Antichrist. And he is going to have, he's going to die. <laughs> and he's going to counterfeit the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ so that he can say, see, I am Messiah. But what? He's not going to offer a surrendered life, a lay down life. He's going to say, it's, it's, you can have self. Because what is Antichrist trying to protect? Protect the self-life. Come on, awake people. Do not be deceived. Any gospel that preserves the self-life is the lie. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can have this poison of this, of this refined sugar. No, I choose not to eat the dainties of this world. As Daniel, that does, has no strength over me. Antichrist spirit governs the self-life. The spirit of Christ governs the selfless life. And so I'm going to finish with this, as I spoke about in Ephesians chapter 2, speaks of this, this governing of the self-life. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, were in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power 
before the authority of the heir, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conduct in times past, in the lusts, desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were in dead in sins, hath quickened us together. For by grace are you saved. See, how, how did he deliver us from that spirit? By laying down his life at the cross, by shedding his blood, so that we could be delivered from this spirit of Antichrist. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul speaks of living, being governed by the spirit of Christ. And it says, and I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord. What was he a prisoner? A prisoner to lay down his life. A prisoner to live for Christ. I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you'll walk worthy of the calling by which you are called. The high calling of the throne. To overcome. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling by which you are called. With all, how? With all lowliness and meekness. With long suffering. Forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity, the oneness of the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, in the bond of peace, the Prince of Peace. This is the one new man, the one new order in Christ, the new creation. Governed by the Spirit of Christ. But the counterfeit is Antichrist. He is having a one new order under this head, the personification to those who allow this Antichrist spirit to rise upon their heart and be ruled by the flesh, ruled by the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Beware. of the deceit of the enemy. As Second Thessalonians says, you see, the spirit of Antichrist is going to come to its peak before the appearing of Jesus Christ and his people. Before Christ fully comes to maturation in his people, the, the enemy will have come to the middle of the week and he will counterfeit the death and resurrection of Christ the abomination of desolation it says in 2 Thessalonians that he is going to come with all signs and lying wonders to deceive and that Christ's coming is after Christ's coming is after the working of Satan with all lies and lying wonders. All signs and lying wonders. And how is he going to come? As his spirit arises upon the hearts of his sons and they are going to expose because they have overcome that spirit. They are what Isaiah 59 speaks of the enemy shall come in like a flood, a flood of deception. But the Lord, Yahweh, shall raise up a standard against it. That standard is the sons who have overcome that spirit. And then in Isaiah chapter 60, we see what they look like. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The full revelation of Christ through the seven spirits of God. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the nation shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes and see, they gather themselves together. They come unto thee, thy sons Come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see, and be enlightened, and thine heart shall fear, and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea, the peoples of the nations, 
the abundance of the sea shall come unto thee. Be diligent. Be aware. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Shalom.